Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 15th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Looks like some users discovered somewhat of an annoyance when it comes to network settings and System D. System D is a recent addition to Linux and it is used to start various services like, for example, the networking subsystem. Turns out that if you do not configure your DNS server or NTP server, it does fall back to not well documented defaults. Now, typically that's not a huge issue. The defaults for the DNS server are the Google DNS server, which are quite often used anyway. The NTP server is a little bit more tricky because it also uses a Google server that actually should no longer be used. But the overall problem may be that, for example, if you're using DNS queries to unauthorized DNS servers to identify infected systems, this may lead to false positives. Also, DNS changers often have set the DNS settings to the Google DNS servers in order to bypass some filters. So overall, if you see Linux systems all of a sudden connecting to Google DNS servers, it may not be malicious. It may just be this default configuration. And researchers at P1 Security took a closer look at voice over LTE. And now with LTE networks, what's happening is that pretty much data is the only thing being sent. And if you're running voice over LTE, what you're actually doing is you're running voice over IP. And with that, of course, voice over LTE inherited all the favored voice over IP protocols, like for example, SIP and and associated vulnerabilities. So for example, SIP invites can be used in order to enumerate users just uh, like it has been done for normal voice over IP networks. In addition, once malware infects an endpoint like a phone, it's able to listen in on the call. The calls, for example, on Android are just terminated on a special interface. So just like any other network interface, you could run TSVDump on it in order to record the call. The encryption with voice over LTE is done by LTE. So the actual voice over LTE channel does not add any additional encryption. But it doesn't really stop there. Uh, one of the more dangerous issues here is that like so often with a SIP, it's possible to spoof caller IDs pretty easily. And uh, with that, of course, an attacker could, for example, listen in on voicemail or use caller ID to authenticate themselves. Now, one of the more curious exploits that's possible due to this design is that data rates are usually not limited for voice over LTE. So if you have a limited account, then you could always use voice over LTE in order to send data across the network that you won't be built for. So all of these voice over IP covert channels have now a new use. A lot of this, of course, depends on the specific implementation within the handset or the network. So if you're interested in it, uh, take a look at the paper. And if you are worried about uh, retaining some form of anonymity online, uh, Tails version 3 was just released. Tails is a Linux distribution that's uh, from the ground up designed for anonymous uh, internet use. So it does include Tor, but it also includes features that, for example, avoid storing data between reboots on the system. Often, if you just run, for example, Tor browser, on a normal system, it's quite easy to still leak information about the system and be identifiable just because of past data that's being retained on the system. So Tails tends to be the best way if you are trying to actually stay anonymous. One little drawback of a Tails version 3, it no longer supports 32-bit systems. Shouldn't really be a big deal, but I find 
point that a lot of people use sort of an old leftover laptop in order to run Tails on. And yes, this may still be a 32-bit system. I think most users now know the dangers of plugging random USB devices into your phone or your laptop, but apparently it's not just USB you have to worry about. If you own a Nexus 9 phone, you also have to worry about headsets. The problem here is that once you plug a headset into your phone, and the microphone pin exceeds a certain voltage, then the headphone jack actually turns into a serial debug interface. So with that, you have full access to the phone. There was a patch actually for this back in March. Must have missed it. And uh, while it wasn't complete, it didn't uh, intercept all possible ways how this could be abused. And now we have a new patch that was released in June for Android in order to fix uh, this problem. The problem they addressed here was that in addition to just providing a debug interface uh, on the headphone jack, you also had access to a debugger, which then of course would allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.